Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome to this week's recap video. We actually have, I think, four or five videos from this last week, which is much better than last week's recap where we had two. How do we have five? I don't know. Well, there was, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, including today's. Wow, we didn't We duplicate? worked hard this week. How does that make any sense? Well, I didn't double up, did I? Maybe you did. Better what? check. <laughs> also, Aaron does have a mic on today. And let me just show you what it looks like from my perspective. Let me take a little video here. So there he is. There it is. There's the camera and the chair and the last Christmas tree I have to undecorate up here. This is the last little bit of Christmas. It's colder on this side than on your side. True. And I'm pretty warm because of this right here. But I'm also warm because I've got a fleece blankie on. Blankie? Yeah. I'm all cozed, as Benjamin would say. Yeah. So I have here from Felco a pair of special edition Felco 2s because they hit their 75th anniversary last year, 2020. Yeah. So I'm like a few days late in announcing this new uh, pruner. So it's just a special edition that's got this really fancy wrap on it. And we thought it would be fun to give this away to one of you guys. Uh, we will link it down below for any of you who are interested in like looking at it and the little, specs. It's a little on the spendy side. It is on the spendy side. It is a special edition. It's more like collectors. I've got plenty of pairs. I felt plenty of pairs. Plenty of pair of felt. Do you call these pairs, like I have a pair of pruners or? I think that's kind of an age old question. That's oh. like the uh, Oxford comma. Okay, anyway, I've got lots of Felco 2s and I do not need to have these. So I thought one of you guys may like to win this pair. So down below this video, all you have to do is comment. I don't care what you say, just say something nice. <laughs> and you will be entered in to win. And this is uh, worldwide, right? We'll, yeah. send, we'll send these anywhere. So anyway, they do feel good. It, it looks weird to me to see them all red, but kind of fun. Yeah. A little 75th anniversary treat. Okay. And this is the exact pair you will be getting, like the pair that I have right here. You can sign the box. Oh, well, nobody will care if I sign the <laughs> box. <laughs> anyway, let's get into last week's videos. The first one was potting succulent cuttings and organizing. In this video, so what did I do? <laughs> what did I do? Oh, okay. Um, I had, I can't even remember back that far. I had a bunch of succulent cuttings for when we cleaned out the plant room and moved everything out there. And I wanted to let them, not always do I let them sit out and callous. Sometimes I pot them right away, but it was just such a big day of work. I just thought I'm just gonna leave these all. They can sit here and dry and then I'll pot them later. So I showed you that process. And then we also had more cleaning to do in there. So we organized the light systems. Um, it looks much better than it did before. And I knew that that would happen. We put the light systems in there and just kind of left it knowing once we get the rest of everything out here, we'll move everything around. Um, and then we cleaned up some pots. Mm -hmm. Correction, I cleaned up some pots and some other things in the middle part of the barn and got that organized. So JJ said, what other pest control do you use for mice and rats in the barns? Being on such a big property, you uh, must run into one or two. That is very true. Are Russell and Cheddar your mouse or cats? Kind of. They're kind of mouse or cats. I think they're too well fed. I do see Cheddar hunting more often than Russell. I will give Cheddar that credit. Um, we don't use any poison around here because we have cats. And um, there are neighbor cats and I don't want to poison a mouse and have a cat get a hold of it. And I worked at a vet clinic for five and a half years and I saw that happening. Um, we use just like straight up old fashioned mouse traps. And then I do use a mouse repellent. It's called Mouse Magic, I believe. It's like, a, like an essential oil, like peppermint. Mm -hmm. Smells really good. There's little packets that you can kind of toss around. I put them in our basement and we've never had a mouse problem in our house. Um, but I do put them down in there because I, I think I saw a mouse poop once and I was like, oh. but I put that repellent down and that yeah, was sorry, been years yeah. ago. Yeah. So, so far that works really well, but it's just traditional traps, the two cats, and then that, the little essential oil stuff. Irene said, I don't see a drain in the floor of the, of the room or a sink for filling watering cans. Also, will you add a humidifier in the room for plants? No, no. And probably not. Uh, we so, should maybe add a humidifier, though. Why would we need to do that? Well, because you got plants in there. It wouldn't be a bad idea. I think to they keep create it. there. If you have so many plants, we're going to have so many seedlings in there. Just the sheer amount of misting I'm going to be doing to keep those seedlings happy. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think for most of the year, it'll maintain. Fairly. I've always kind of wanted a reason to buy one of those Dyson humidifiers, though. Oh, you guys just gave them ammunition. 
Okay, so draining the floor, there's nowhere for anything to drain to out there. Our system, like our where we would attach a drain to, is way up in Versailles. Um, and we've talked about, in fact, we do have a lot of trenching on the schedule for this year, and you guys will see some major projects going down this, this spring, probably. And we thought about, while we are, are having everything trenched up, why don't we have, you know, something like that trenched or put in, maybe even like a little bathroom put in the barn, that would be really nice. But it all, it just all costs money and it all, you know, I don't know, we have to prioritize the things that we're doing. Uh, the sink for filling water in cans, we do have active water right outside the door in the barn, but same, same thing for putting in a sink. Um, we talked to the guys about it and we were trying to figure out where everything could drain to and how it would work and it just didn't make sense. Um, you know, maybe something that we add in the future. I have no idea. Sharon said no place to sit. Eventually we are going to move a couple of chairs in there. In fact, I've got a couple of chairs in the room right to my left. Um, they're leather chairs that the cats just, leather and cats do not mix. So I want to get some new chairs for that room eventually. And when I do end up doing that, we'll move those chairs out to the studio because they don't need to be nice to be out there. I don't think it's really like noticeable, especially from a distance, all of the scratch marks on those chairs. Um, anyway, yeah, we're working on it. Uh, Sui Jane said, thank you for all your efforts. I love the potting tray you were using. I have looked and found several types available for all sorts of prices. Any recommendations on size, material, weight, or sturdiness? Do you remember what brand that one was? Is it Jiffy? I don't know, but I know we've linked to it before. I can, I can yeah. try to grab a link. Yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll find it and we'll link it uh, to you. It's a really thick plastic and I love that potting tray. There it is. Tierra, Gar <laughs> Tierra Garden tidy tray one piece potting tray $57 I did not pay $57 for that I think tray. that's because it's such an odd size to ship oh it is an odd size but I bought it at my parents garden center so if you can find a potting tray similar and not have to yeah it says free shipping I guess it's probably built into it's the built price. into the price yeah. 5707 we'll link it for you down below uh Teresa said Aaron did the drone survive the icing yeah, it did. I just didn't know why it was freaking out. Uh, it kept giving me error messages, and I was thinking, like, why is it doing that? And then when it came down to the ground, I realized. There's I think ice. I took a picture of the ice, too. I'll... You had me take it off the blades, like, feel the blades, yeah. all the ice on it. Yeah. Um, that footage, like, I really wanted to see the sun. When I you know. got up, I was like, ah! <laughs> and it just stopped. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, we saw the sun for the first time in, like, two weeks. Yeah. It was glorious. We went for a walk, Aaron, Benjamin, and I, and it was so warm. Like There was no wind at all. Um, we didn't even need a coat. And then today, it's just crummy out there. It's been raining. I mean, it's beautiful still, and I know it's so good for our, our area to get all of this rain. So it doesn't make me sad, but it's kind of miserable looking out there at the moment. And our dirt field up there right now where the grass is going and such is a wreck. It's like a mud slick out there. Uh, Sheila said, curious, but you do not scrub out or clean your used clay pots before repotting new plants in them. I will tell you that I do that every time, <laughs> but I don't. Um, I always do if it's on video normally because I always want to show the, the best method of doing something. And that is the best, safest method so that you do not perpetuate any disease or insect problems. Um, especially if you're not familiar with, uh, with you know, how to spot those kind of things. It's always a good idea to clean them out. Um, and I'll usually give them a good, like a rinse or maybe a hose down. But if I know something hasn't been dealing with any kind of bug issue, I'll just clean it out. There'll be some dirt left over and it's no big deal. I'll just use the pot again. Can't worry about that kind of stuff too much. Okay, next video is a tour of our grow lights. So once we had everything set up in the studio, we decided it'd be fun to go through and just give my thoughts on all the grow lights since I'd had a chance to use most everything that I had have out there right now. I've had a chance to use it for several years and that really does give you a different perspective because if you've used them for several different things like I have used all of those grow lights well most of them except for the Oslo ones that are new um, for both seed starting and for like succulents and for other house plants so you can kind of see how they work for each one of those things first question was from Mila thanks for the overview very helpful one of these days I'll be able to get either a sunlight system or a bamboo one I'd like to hear your thoughts on how you guys budget your projects Kind of just talked about that a little bit. What are the key steps in planning and saving for a project? It's probably different for us, like significantly different because we generate our income on doing the projects. Like we make money from the viewership of people watching the projects. And so we've found a correlation with 
the bigger the project we do, not always. I mean, sometimes we do simple projects um, and they get lots of views, but typically, I mean, you look at Mr. Beast videos, you know, he's giving away a million dollars. He's buying people houses and stuff. Like he's the poster we're not child. At that level. No, we're not. We're not. <laughs> but he's the poster child for like go big and then the money will follow. Mm-hmm. Um, or maybe the money comes and then you do it. I don't know how that works. But either way, you know, I think that uh, it, it's just tough because we're, we're in a different position than I, a lot of people are. I still think, though, that we have to, you and I, identify the projects that are the most important. And not that that list doesn't change because it changes all the time. I mean, all of a sudden your furnace goes out and you have to replace it. Or your water heater leaks and makes a big hole in your kitchen ceiling and you have to fix it. And so something inevitably, inevitably gets pushed down that priority list. And we have all of that, the same as everybody else, I think. Mm-hmm. You know, we have a list of projects we would like to do and a list of projects that are necessary to do. And then you have to kind of like balance timing and yeah. when it works out. Um, yeah. Our list of projects is probably longer than most, given the fact that it's our job. Well, it's our job and we've got a lot of space and a lot of it's raw. You yeah. know, that whole pasture up front was pretty... I mean, it was like barren. We've had to put everything in, all the infrastructure. Um, and so that takes time and it takes budgeting to do that. I mean, okay, so like for for example, the power poles, right? They came down this winter. We had two interior power poles in our property the first year we moved in, which is four and a half years ago. We had those two buried because we had to have some other work done and we just thought, you know, this is a good timing. We'll get these two buried. It wasn't like astronomical. And we asked at that point in time how much it would cost to get all of the poles in front uh, buried. And so they gave us a a number so that we had a kind of an idea, but it didn't happen until four years later because we had to, we prioritized other things and we were saving for that kind of on the back end and doing these other projects. And so it just worked out that it took four years to have it happen, Mm -hmm. but yeah, kind of just, it just depends. Yeah. I guess I know it's kind of a squirrely answer. Sorry. Uh, Denise said, when you have herb seedlings under grow lights, does it matter whether the plants need shade or sun? If so, how do you adjust for that? Um, you know, I, I read that question and I, I've never really thought about that because I probably wouldn't put a shade loving plant naturally under a grow light. Um, if I have anything on the inside of my house, which is normally where our grow lights are, if it's a low light plant or a shade loving plant, we can put it most anywhere in our house um, and they'll be happy as long as they're getting a tiny bit of light. But I wouldn't really think of housing something that needed shade in a grow light situation. It's mostly just things I want sun. Mary said, you mentioned cleaning the wicking mats for the seed starting kits. What is the best way to clean them? Now, I don't know the best way to clean them. In fact, I emailed Gardener Supply late last night and I don't think I've seen an email back yet. Um, So I will follow up on this one. But the way I clean them is when I do my tray, seed trays um, and that sort of thing, I do a one part bleach to 10 parts water solution. So it's just a really weak bleak solution, bleak bleach solution. And that's what I dipped the mats in. So I got them in there, kind of just like roughed them up a little bit. Um, They weren't really super dirty or anything. I mean, a little bit. I never dealt with any algae or anything like that on them. So I just dunked them in there and then kind of wrung them out really gently and then just laid them out to dry. So that's what I did. I don't know if that's the best way to do it. They are working, so (laughs) we're good so far. Um, gardeners, though, I did notice because I got on their website to see if they had any tips on that. Um, they do have replacement wicking mats you can buy, which I, in my email, said, <laughs> I think I'm going to need some <laughs> replacement wicking mats at some point. Anyway, Heather said, I've had my eye on the mini bamboo system for a while now, maybe someday. I have been making my own system with some old four foot shop lights and fluorescent bulbs. Any suggestions on what to look for when choosing bulbs? Every time I need to order more, I get so over- overwhelmed with the details the what, the color, any advice on what to stick to. I actually meant to address this in the video and I completely forgot and I told Aaron after, I just thought, oh dang it. And I don't know like all the science on grow lights and all the different color spectrums and things like that. I usually just stick to something that's like full spectrum bulb. Um, LEDs are awesome because they're strong. You can get some really strong ones now that um, make it unnecessary or more unnecessary to raise and lower as your ceilings grow. I do know that like, So different wavelengths or different colors in the spectrum help different processes within your plant. And I know that photosynthetic efficiency happens mostly in the the, uh, blue and red spectrum, Um, but I've never gotten to the science of it and I've never messed around with changing my bulbs and doing that. I'm not super interested in that. I'm interested in just like planting my seeds and having them grow. So I feel like having a full spectrum bulb where they're getting all of the different colors within the spectrum 
um, kind of hits everything where you need it. And if you want to get like really involved, I'm sure there's tons of videos out there about um, grow bulbs and what you should look for. But definitely LEDs have been a, a bump up from fluorescence for me. They've been way uh, more efficient, um, energy saving, cheaper to run, they don't get hot, um, and they're just like, I have stronger plants. Katie said, this may be a stupid question, but I'll ask anyway. You say that you have the grow lights on for 14 to 16 hours a day. When they are off, is it at nighttime so the plants have total darkness or during the day when there's natural light? Does it even matter? Um, you know, I usually just have them follow the kind of the cycle of the day. So the grow lights come on in the morning and they go off in the evening. And mostly because we had them up in the plant room, I did that because I didn't want people like neighbors to see this like weird eerie glow coming from our house. So I didn't really want the grow lights to be going all night. Plus your plants need a chance to rest. They need a chance to kind of like just breathe for a moment. So they'll grow all day under those grow lights, you know, and just soak in that energy. And then at night in the darkness, they can just chill for a few hours until the grow lights come back on. Joan says, are grow lights harmful to your eyes? I don't think so. I, don't, I mean, I wouldn't stare at them for I wouldn't, yeah. endless amounts of time. Yeah, I probably wouldn't want to stare at them, but I don't think so. Critter Girl said, in your situation, is it possible to put dry seed starting mix and the seeds in the seed trays and then wait and add water later at the correct time for starting the seeds? So our situation this year is that I'm having a baby in two weeks or less. Um, and I have tons of seeds I wanna get started. I have my schedule all made up, but who knows if I'm gonna actually get it done. Like this year is just kind of the year to just let the chips fall however they may. Whatever we get done, we get done. And I'm totally cool with that. Um, and I really wish that that would work, but I don't think it will because putting dry seed starting mix in is just, you have to pre-moisten it. I've never really had great luck starting with dry soil. I just always have issues keeping it watered properly. Um, so I'll probably just start them normally if we get around to it. Interesting thought though. Yeah, it is. And I really wish it would work that way. It's kind of like you could, it's like just pre-packaged. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. Also, could flat pieces of wood be placed on top of the grow light systems to make shelves for display, storage, or plants with grow lights placed over from overhead? I don't see why not. And most of the grow lights, like the, well, not most, the um, bamboo grow lights, bamboo LED grow light gardens, you can actually buy a separate tray, and then it has a spot where you can set it on the top to create that shelf on the top. On the three tier, I don't know that the, the, I would be super comfortable doing that because I don't think I would want to add a bunch of extra weight to it. Something to think about though. Uh, Marlene said, can you tell me again where you ordered your Lysiantha seeds from? I would love to try and grow them. Uh, thank you. Those came from Johnny Seeds and I ordered, I think I've got, I, I grew for the first time last year Lysiantha from seed and I only tried one variety and I had such phenomenal success with it out in the cut flower garden that I think I ordered four or five different varieties this year to start which I'm planning on starting this week at some point because they take forever to grow, forever. And I was starting to get like kind of ticked off at them. I just thought, I'm not gonna grow these again. This is, this is junk. Like I'll try to see if I can order these plants from somebody who's already got them grown on, which maybe that would be a fine, I mean, a good thing to do. <laughs> do that too. But it's kind of nice to have something to do here in January anyway. But Johnny Seeds had some really good ones. Catherine said, what, no vans? I almost didn't recognize your feet. <laughs> Yes, I have been busting out my, well, I've got an older pair of Nike shoes and I bought a new pair of Nike shoes and I haven't been wearing my Vans as much because they have been a major contributor to my rib issues during this pregnancy. And I, it has been so much better since my physical therapist, she said, like, said you either need to get inserts for these shoes, which I did, um, or, but my feet are too swollen now. Like my feet are so swollen and my hands are swollen. My face is starting to get swollen. We have two weeks left. Um, but since switching to back to my Nike shoes just for a little while, it has helped out tremendously to have like some better support. <sighs> I feel so old. <laughs> I will get back to those though. Tin Lamp said, are running grow lights hard on your electric bill? No, most, all of ours are LED now. I yeah. don't think I have a single light in there that's uh, fluorescent or right? Yeah. Like traditional, whatever. So LEDs are really cheap to run. So nope, not bad on the electric bill. So the next video, I guess maybe this is why you thought we didn't have five videos. It was a look back at 2020, mm. which, you know, it was really fun. Aaron just decided to put together kind of a compilation of what we had done this year, which to me, like he was trying to fit it all within this song, which that was a phenomenal song choice on your part. I think it just like, I don't know, it brings up emotion. 
Yeah, it does. And I think that that was the general... Like, Melancholy. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when I watched it, I'm like, this leaves out so much. Yeah. Like, there's nothing about my cut flower garden or all my pumpkins or my tomato harvest or all these things that I thought were super, like, awesome from the last year. Um, and some of them we just didn't have good video footage of. And if we did that, because putting out a video almost every day of the year, we had 300 and you told me how many videos we did. Yeah, was it like 320 or 340 videos or something like that? But that doesn't include the Highlights channel. Right. So 300 and we'll say 20 on the conservative side videos on our main channel. And then our Highlights channel has several videos mm -hmm. on it. It was over 365 for sure. Yeah. So when you put out that many videos, that means that many projects, really, because a lot of them are project based. That's a that would be a really long video compilation to watch. Yeah. Um, and I don't think anybody cares. It just was like a really kind of fun, quick look at yeah. what we did. Um, Edith said, I'm new to this channel and a, little, and a little confused. Are you creating a garden center slash retail location? I'm working my way backward and have watched about 10 episodes. Still can't figure out how the garden center and your property are related. They are not related at all. Um, my parents have a garden center in town and I worked there. Growing up, worked there full time for 10 plus years. But Garden Answer and my parents' garden center were not related at all in any way. Um, aside from relationally. Yeah, aside from they're my family. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the fact that you're related to the owners. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what I mean. But yeah. our businesses aren't related. Yeah, right. Um, certainly, it's nice to have that. I mean, being that our business is garden based, it's nice to have that resource here. And my parents' garden center is pretty good. I mean, there's lots of really neat things. They bring in some really fun stuff and they are a full service and year round garden center, which is really nice too. So, you know, there's that. Um, but no, garden answer is something that Aaron and I created on our own, like kind of on the side of our full-time jobs there for a little while. And then it eventually became our full-time jobs about two plus years in. It's a lot of nights and weekends. Cindy said, awesome highlight reel. Uh, how is the tree that you mended doing? It seems to be doing great. It almost looks like one side is healed. Yeah. Like that one side that you were able to get a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. I mean, it never skipped a beat. Both sides of the tree, because it split right down the middle, both sides never wilted. They never yellowed. One side didn't drop leaves before the other side. So, I mean, we'll see after winter what happens. Do you wonder if it had been cracked for a long time? No, I think I would have seen that. Uh, maybe not cracked, but like internally. Like uh, it had grown in such a way to where nutrients were being passed along. Um, but like it, it was. It was compromised. It was compromised. It for just maybe, took that, maybe that yeah. one windstorm to. Yeah, well, I'm a period sure of time. That's certainly possible. Trish said, looking back, did you ever imagine that you and Aaron would have people? Oh, like wa uh, watching you walk onto stage and seeing the applause. I'm not going to lie. It got me right in the feels. I had to replay this video several times just to see that part. No, that was really surprising. Don't you think? Yeah. Because you and I both walked out at the same time. Mm -hmm. I was behind you. Yeah, with the camera. With the camera. Yeah. I mean, just every time we go to a show or we're able to go somewhere where we get to meet you guys, it feels unreal. Yeah. And when I watch any footage, like that footage, I'm like, that wasn't me. I mean, I can remember the fear of having to get on the stage. I can remember that feeling. But I don't. It's just like surreal. It's really quite weird. Honestly, like from this point forward, I would love, love to go to shows and just do like meet and greets and um, get to meet you guys and talk to you and not ever have to get on the stage ever again in my life. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Oh, that, we can do that. Yeah. I don't know. Get it? Yeah. Anyway. Katie said, what a year. Can you believe how much you've done? Sometimes I have to go back and to believe it. Like recently. I skimmed through one of our first garden tours. We had to do it in four parts of this garden when we moved in. And I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Like, I think I get bogged down sometimes because some of our projects, we have to do so much infrastructure and so much tearing apart before stuff comes back together or baby plants start looking like it's back to being like a, a more mature garden, I guess. Um, that I sometimes get bogged down in that. And I'm like, why aren't we moving faster? Why isn't this garden coming together? Because I've had, you know, like the visions and the plans from the beginning, but some of them, like the power pools, haven't come to real, uh, reality or realization until this year. Um, and I've got lots more of those going on, you know? I don't know. I think it's good. It's a good idea if you guys don't keep a garden journal or you don't take, if you don't take pictures of your garden, you should. 
you should start taking them at least a couple times a year preferably once every season so that you can monitor your seasonal interest <laughs> in every one of your flower beds so you can see where you need to add some things um, but I think it's such a good way just to remind yourself like no like this is awesome we've been doing some really fun stuff and it's mm -hmm. starting to come together and yeah I think the most the year I was most kind of like surprised was the year uh, Benjamin was born we look back at pictures of what we actually got done that year and we were like how how did we get that done because Benj having Benjamin kind of rocked our life a little bit. Like that spring doing that uh, paver patio oh. at your brother's house? Yeah. How did we get that done or anything else? Barely, because you had to watch Benjamin one of the days. We didn't have any childcare. Yeah, I remember watching Benjamin and trying to film at the same time. We didn't have uh, solid childcare for the first five or six months. Five months. Yeah. It was very hit and miss, and we still were able to... We weren't putting out videos every day No. at that point. Um, but like every other day... Or so. Anyway. Uh, Florence said, how did Russell or Cheddar not make it to, into any of the clips? I don't know. I, I thought back and I was like, how did that happen? But, you know, it's it was only a three-minute song. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to fit everything within that three minutes. Mm -hmm. Which was really difficult. Um, I mean, I didn't fit everything. But, yeah, somehow they didn't make it in there. That's kind of wild. Uh, Jake said, what? No clip of the man murdering the sunflower by the gazebo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. That would look, be a look back on the greatest comments of the year. <laughs> Hashtag triggered. Yeah, that is true. true. Aaron murdered some sunflowers in front of our gazebo. It needed to happen. Hind hindsight on my part. Like, I couldn't do it. Because bless their hearts, they were growing and they were going, <laughs> for, they were going for it. It totally wrecked the whole aesthetic of the front of the gazebo, yeah. which I have a hard time with anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Aaron just goes out there and just makes it happen. Next video is planting herb seeds and indoor growing tips. So I wanted to get some herbs planted and going to then move into our kitchen. And I wanted to have those up and going. Like, they'll be strong little seedlings by the time we have uh, the baby. That's kind of mm -hmm. what I was hoping for. Um, and we'll have those in the kitchen. I started deal, deal, <laughs> dill, parsley, basil, thyme, sage, uh, lemon balm and what else Par oregano mm. and everything is up except for the sage I just checked today uh, parsley parsley is I think it's up I mean I'm getting like <laughs> as close as I can down to the seedling or to the tray and I think I see some action there but parsley is a little quiet and the sage is quiet but everything else is up and looking amazing um, and then we just went over some general growing tips for herbs inside because it can be a little bit tricky with herbs to keep them nice and full. Um, so I just kind of shared what I've learned throughout the years. Uh, Penny said, is it easy to pop the plants out of the starter trays? Yes, for the most part. The only issue I've had popping seed uh, or seedlings out is if I haven't let them grow on enough. If they're still a little too young, I usually just use the stake, like the little identification stake I have popped in the tray, just to kind of go around the edges and kind of help lift it out. But most of the time, my stuff is so rooted in those that I can just pop them out and they come out with their little, you can see the roots on the outside and they stay all together. Anne said, I would love to see more videos on this topic, especially pruning. I grew still um, outside over the summer and I got huge. How do I keep it small for indoor use? Well, uh, herbs are going to stay on the smaller side when you put them inside anyway, just naturally because they're not getting what they what they truly want and they truly want to be out. They want to be out. They want to have airflow. They want to have, you know, water and fertilizer and all that stuff. And if you even if you're providing all those things inside, the light just is not the same. Um, so they naturally stay smaller. Uh, I would recommend starting with smaller plants. One, you know, choose dwarf or compact varieties. Um, start with like a four inch, if you're not going to start them from seed, start with a four inch size from your garden center or like the one I, in that video I got at the produce section, the grocery store, and that's a nice small plant. So if you start small and just keep pruning on them, keep using those herbs in your cooking, it'll naturally stay smaller anyway. Lindsay said, with these plants being in a climate controlled environment with grow lights, do they have a shorter lifespan? Will they run out of energy or just keep going until you decide to start fresh? I got an arrow garden for Christmas and it'll be my first time growing edibles inside. That's exciting. I've never tried the arrow garden before. Um, I would say that some of them have a shorter lifespan, like cilantro and basil. Um, I find that reseeding those every once in a while. One of my Christmas decorations just fell down oh. right behind you. <laughs> distracted me. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, basil and cilantro. Um, I tend to reseed those a little bit more often, but the other ones, typically I can get them like rosemary, I can get them to go through a full season inside, like in the winter, and then I put them outside. 
Um, same with a lot of the other ones, oregano, thyme, parsley, they just keep on going. Uh, Dee said, do you leave the heat mat on? No, once the seeds have germinated, the heat mat gets turned off. Veronica said, what's the difference between a spoma seed starter soil and a spoma potting mix? Can I use either one for herb gardening? It depends on what stage you're starting in. So in the video, I kind of explained if you've got one that's already started, um, like the little basil plant, I would use the regular organic potting mix because it's formulated, um, it's got like, lots of nutrients in it and it also maintains moisture levels really nicely. Seed starting mix is ideal for any kind of seed starting because it's a loftier blend of soil. It's uh, lighter, uh, it, it enables the roots of your new plants to be able to establish quicker, like they don't have to work as hard, like to get through the soil. Um, it doesn't retain moisture quite as, as much as the regular potting mix, which is good. Like seedlings, you really wanna monitor yourself anyway, and you kinda wanna be the one to give them moisture. Uh, Erica said, how long does the grow light need to be on each day for growing seedlings? How long for the basil plant? Also for succulents. I set mine to go, I think they're going 15 hours, 14 hours right now. It's set on the same hours for every single one of my plants in there, and I think it's set for 15 hours. Usually I shoot for anywhere between 12 and 16 hours. Um, like, I think that's a good, that's a good window. Ooh. Annette said, just one question. I get a bit discouraged and have given up attempting to grow them myself, um, herbs. Are there small holes in the plastic clear cover? Not in the small ones I used in that video. I do have some larger domes uh, for my 11 by 22 inch trays. They're tall domes if I'm growing like snapdragons or something that want to get tall pretty quick. Um, and they do have vents on the side that you can open. And that is very helpful, but not all of them do. I find like I already took my top off. When I noticed that most of my ceilings had germinated, off comes the top and I want to encourage airflow around these plants. I don't want to coddle these plants and make them too weak. And I don't want to encourage any kind of fungal or mold or anything like that going on inside. So I don't want to trap extra moisture. That's just for the like, from seed till when they, they start popping through the ground. Janet said, can you make up a gallon of fertilizer and label and save it, or does it have to be made fresh for each use? I think that is a really good question and it depends on what kind of fertilizer you're using. So if you're using a synthetic, I think you're totally fine to do that. Um, you would wanna make sure to stir it up every time you use it so that the dilution rate, like the suspension is right uh, inside your container. If you're using an organic, like the, what I use, the Espoma liquid fertilizers, there's actually living microbes in that fertilizer. When you've got it in its container in its concentrated state, those microbes are dormant. But when you introduce them to water in your watering can and stir them up, it activates them. And they won't last, they won't live in water for days and days and days and days. Um, so the if effectiveness of the fertilizer goes down a little bit. So I think that mixing it up fresh every time is the way to go with an organic like that. It certainly would be easier to be able to uh, mix stuff up and just let it sit there and use it as you need it. Um, but you know, I would rather err on the safe side and mix it up fresh every time. Lauren said, when should you start fertilizing your seedlings? Usually I wait until they have their first set of true leaves. So the first set of leaves they produce are not true leaves, it's their second set that are the true leaves. At that point, I will usually go in and thin my seedlings and I'll leave it down to maybe, if there's a whole bunch in there, I'll leave it down to the two strongest looking ones. I'll let them grow on a little bit more and then I'll thin it down to one. Um, but at that point you can do half strength fertilizer and you'll wanna use like a start fertilizer um, or like I'll use the grow or the indoor, but I use it at half strength. And when the plant starts bulking up and you know has a more established root system, then you can start right using it at the regular dilution rate. Uh, Samantha said, do you plan on doing any winter sowing this year? I tried it last year and had great success with some things and not so much with others. And I'm looking forward to experimenting more this year. Yes. In fact, we just did some winter sowing this morning. I had 20 water jugs that I had saved throughout this winter. And so I just thought, you know what, what the heck? We may as well give it a try. I think based on comments and suggestions that you guys gave me um, from last year's project, I was able to implement some new things. I used different soil this time. Um, I labeled them differently this time so I could actually <laughs> see the labels after a while. Last year, mine all wore off and I could barely tell what I had in each one of those uh, water jugs. But I think it's definitely something uh, worth everybody's time. It's kind of a fun thing to do this time of year. All right, so the last video from this week was creamy butternut squash pasta plus a little decorating in the kitchen. And in that video, um, I was just cooking our lunch and I thought you guys might like to see what I was making. It was a new recipe to me. It was from Half Baked Harvest, who I follow on Instagram. Um, and I saw her post that recipe. I don't even know when it was, but oh my goodness, was it so good. Um, so I shared that and then I got a new little table for our kitchen and did some arranging with some stuff out of the garden. 
Uh, Coast to Coast Home and Garden said the pasta looks so yummy. I love making butternut squash into a pasta. It's so good. Next time Benjamin gets M&Ms, you should pop them on a plate in the microwave for like 20 seconds. How did I not know about this trick? Yeah, that sounds good. It does sound good. So suggestion to you all, M&Ms, <laughs> 20 seconds in the microwave. Let's all do it. Dark Horse said everything looks wonderful. By the way, prosciutto is pronounced prosciutto. I'm married to an Italian. I did see that comment quite a bit. I have never heard it pronounced prosciutto. You is know that? What? I mean, Just... it's not regional because if that's how you pronounce it in Italian, prosciutto, that's the yeah. way you pronounce it. It's okay. It's all a learning experience. How is, uh, how is prosciutto <laughs> spelled? It's spelled with a C in it. Oh, okay. yeah, P R O S C I U T T. Well, I can oh. see how S C would make a sh sound. <laughs> <laughs> we just said the opposite thing. <laughs> Shoot. But if it was prosciutto, it would be like C H. Prosciutto. Well, but it's not an English word. Schulhaus. <laughs> My old schulhaus. <laughs> yeah. Okay, moving on. Bahamian Lily said, "For the sauce, a vitamin mix would have been perfect. Yes, it would have. We have one, don't we?" No, we don't have one of those. Those are nice, aren't they? Yeah. We don't have that in our kitchen. We have like the little bullet thing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought about getting the blender out, which would have been better in hindsight, but I already had the um, immersion blender out. It did the job. That's what I'm about in the kitchen. Yes, cooking videos are always an adventure for me. It's always a hot mess. And I always tell Aaron like this video is a mess. Like good luck with your editing. <laughs> have fun with this and I always do things that I think oh you know whatever just getting by uh, Sally said am I the only one wondering how she's going to reach those light switches now I'd be knocking over those vases every time I reach behind them to turn on the lights which I should have explained this in the video I don't even know what the left light switch does I don't ever uh, use that it controls one single light that we never, we generally never turn on. And then the one on the right, we only turn on if we're filming. We don't turn that light on. I never turn that oh, light on. Oh, one is a kitchen light. So the one, as you're looking at the one on the left, is the kitchen light, which we, we never, never use. use. And then the other one is that single light that we only that, turn on when we're filming. Yeah. So it's probably turned on, like, how often do we film in the kitchen? I had it turned on that day because it's filming in the kitchen, but it's so few and far between that nobody's, like, really reaching toward it except for usually me. Maybe you, in which case, like we can sneak. There's actually room. I should have showed too. Like if you swing around and look, there's room to get your hand back there and switch something on and off if you needed to. We'd probably turn one of those switches on like less than once a month. Yeah. So they're really unused. Um, there were also, there. I don't think there was any, I don't think you included any comments, Aaron, about the table placement. We're getting emails about it oh, and everything. Yeah. Like, I honestly don't know what it would be like to live in the body of somebody who worries so much about everything, but that table being there, like, does not worry me in the slightest. There's tons of room. Like, I was carrying, it may not have looked like it in the video, I know sometimes it's deceiving, but I was carrying big Christmas tree boxes because I took down some Christmas trees mm, night before last or whatever. Anyway, no problem navigating through that area, and I had big tubs of Christmas stuff. I had a laundry basket on my hip. Totally fine. Um, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't put something there that I knew would be a problem. And I checked it too. Like I walked around a bunch of times to make sure one, no sticks were going to hit anybody in the eye and two, that nobody would clip it like with their hip or whatever. Um, and we don't let Benjamin crawl on stuff. So like he just doesn't, not yeah. that it couldn't happen. Like yeah. I'm not, I'm not, um, what's the word? Saying that it can't happen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that it can't happen. <laughs> Cause it can, um, but like I grew up around stuff like that. My mom has that exact table in a different shade in their entryway. Um, and it just, it's just not a thing for me. I don't know. I love it. Like it's so pretty right there. I walk through the kitchen door and coming down from the landing when I get the laundry and I just I'm like, why didn't I have this here before? That's so much prettier than a coat rack. Uh, Teresa said, uh, take it from a pro chef. Vodka does not impart flavor into any dishes. I would beg to differ <laughs> with that. It does to me. I have like a very, like, what is the word? Sensitive What palette? is my problem? Like, I need my brain back. <laughs> this baby's sucking it right after me. Yeah, like I can taste things in food and I can taste vodka. And I, it, that's why I actually reduce the amount of herbs too, because it's like so full blown in my face if I put a full amount of what a recipe calls for that 
I just won't enjoy it. So, and I would rather add in more flavor, like as a garnish or, you know, as an afterthought than ruin an entire meal. Um, vodka for me, I just, it, I wasn't feeling it and I'm so glad I didn't put it in there. And the recipe offered that substitute, the chicken broth and cider. And so I just followed her recommendation on that. Uh, Jake said, oh, we got two from Jake today. <laughs> Um, hey, does that Euphorbia, which I think the Euphorbia I cut, the variety is called Ascot Rainbow. I always forget to mention that. Um, does that Euphorbia ooze the irritant in your cuttings? Should people wear gloves to avoid contact with the skin or is it dormant and not secreting the irritant? No, it does. It has that white sap. Also something else I don't worry about. <laughs> Definitely use gloves though. Um, if you're not... Not to say that experience has anything to do with it, but it kind of does. Like I know that euphorbia will um, irritate the skin. I've had that skin irritation from a different variety though of euphorbia and it's not pleasant, um, but you do it once and you'll never do it again. So yeah, it's just not something that I worry about, but definitely something to take into consideration if you do plant that um, and you want to use it for cutting, it lasts forever in a cut arrangement, but it does secrete that white sap that can irritate your skin. Are you not concerned about the cats eating it? <laughs> Do the cats seem concerned? Did one of them? Oh, here, right here. Which one? Oh, you're Russell, I can tell. And that's it for today's video for the recap. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Remember to comment down below if you would like to win this pair of 75th anniversary edition Felco 2 pruners. My favorite pair of pruners on this planet right here. So anyway, thank you guys. Have a great week and we'll see you in the next video.